welcome back to my channel or if this is your first time watching me welcome to kim dave in this video i'm going to be showing you guys how to make the pattern for a bodice with a shoulder that sometime last year or the year before i did a basic bodice pattern block and the feedback was really really good but you guys had a lot of questions about that pattern so in this particular tutorial i'm going to be showing you how i create my front my back and the front has a shoulder that which you can use to create your princess scene this technique that i use in this video is completely different from how i did it in my first bodice pattern tutorial so if you've seen that one just open your mind to something completely new because what i do is i plan the front and the back on the same sheet of paper and then go ahead to trace out my plan add my seam allowance and that is what i will use to make my sample or make my garment or develop my design if you haven't subscribed already make sure to join the diy fam by clicking that red subscribe button down below turn on the notification bell as well so you know every time i have a new video on the channel like basically every week this advice i always suggest that whenever you make patterns make a sample before you go ahead to commit and cut in your main material so you are just sure that it works for your design at heart so go ahead and grab your pens pencils books just as to take down notes and measurements and let's jump straight into this video I'm going to be working with the following tools as per usual to create this pattern. I have my pattern master and my set square, which come in very handy when I draw my straight and my curved lines. I have my roll of pattern paper, my long metal ruler, my pencil, eraser, sharpener, paper, scissors, my marker pen, as well as my tape measure to take down my measurements. You will need the following measurements and possibly more as you create this pattern. Just make sure you use yours for the best results so it suits you or your client. So I highly recommend this pattern cutting made easy by Gillian Holman. I would have not been able to create this tutorial without the help of this book. So I'm going to be linking it below for anyone who is curious to check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and plan my back bodice and I'm just going in drawing a long horizontal line like so. This is going to become my shoulder line later on. And along this line, I'm marking half of my bust line plus about one inch east. So I ended up with 19 inches for my measurement. So I'm just going ahead to square this line downwards so we create something that looks somewhat of a square. And then we can plan the back on one side and the front on the other side. So I'm just going ahead to draw a long vertical line like so. This is going to become my center front line later on. But we're going to be focused on the back for the first half of this tutorial. So next up, I'm going to be marking my shoulder to hip measurement vertically. So this is from my shoulder all the way to my hip because I want the plan to cover sort of the top half of my body, bust, waist and hip included. So once I've marked that measurement across minus 26 inches, I'm just joining my points together using my set square and my marker pen. So I'm just going to annotate that this is my hip line so I know everything else falls within this region. So next up, I'm marking about one inches down my back neck and I'm going to divide my around neck measurement by five and I'm going to mark this horizontally. So when you join these two points together, we have our back neckline. So vertically downwards one inch, horizontally divide your around neck by five and whatever that is, you mark that inwards to get the point that you connect together to have your back neckline. So I'm going down another one inch uh, vertically down my center back like so. And from this point, we're going to be squaring across by 10 inches. This is going to help us create our back shoulder point. And I'm going to mark my 10 inch angle there. And we're going to be connecting this to the top of that back neck. So we have our back shoulder. Next up, we'll be marking our armhole depth, which is the distance from the edge of the shoulder down to the bottom of the armhole 
like I said, I suggest you work with your measurements so you have the best outcome that fits you or your client. And I ended up working with eight inches for mine. So yours might be different from what I am using in this tutorial. So I'm just connecting these two points together. Like, so this is why the set square comes in really handy because it just ensured that my lines are nice and straight. So once we've drawn in that line from that point across the front and the back, we're going to be drawing a long line, which is going to become our underarm line or top chest line. Next up, I'm just marking the middle point on this particular line here, and I'm going to be drawing a sort of horizontal line that goes back into the center back for this particular area here. So once that is all drawn and in place, I'm going to mark half of my cross top back measurement along this line because this is going to help me draw my back arm curve so mine is 7.5 inches and i've just marked that here like so next up i'm going to be dividing my bust line by two again so i have a quarter of that measurement to work with for the back side of this pattern so i'm just marking that along this point here and on this particular angle here i'm just going in to draw a diagonal line and mark about one inch of that diagonal line so that guides me on how deep I want that back arm curve to be. So I'm really going to take my pattern master and my marker pen and I'm going to be drawing in my back arm curve. The back arm curve is usually a bit shallower compared to the front. The front is a lot more curvier so just keep that in mind when you're drawing this shape into your plan. Aside my duplicated point here, like so, so far, so good. I have my back neckline, shoulder, and back arm curve in place. Next up, we can go ahead to create the side of the back. So I'm just going down here to extend that quarter bust point downwards. So it goes all the way down to the hip, and this clearly divides the plan into the back and the front. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my shoulder to waist measurement. This is a vertical measurement. So from a shoulder to your waist, once I've marked that in place, I like to mark it across two or three points. So when I draw a horizontal line across, those points act as a guide for me to ensure that I have a somewhat straight line that goes from my back all the way to my front plan later on. So I'm just drawing this in with my set square like so and once my line is complete, I'm going to go back to that waistline and add my dot. So you can go ahead and write that this is your waistline, it's up to you, but I just went ahead to write that in place. So I'm going to go back to my back waistline and I'm going to be marking the middle point here and this is going to become the middle of my waist dot. I'm going in now to draw a vertical line that cuts through that midpoint and this is going to guide me to draw in my dart points. So I'm marking half an inch on both sides of this vertical line like so and I'm going to grab my set square and draw the iconic triangular shapes that darts have. So what this dart is going to do is going to help to get rid of the extra measurements along the waist so it sits nicely on the body. I like to stop my dart on a bodice about half an inch from the hip line so I don't lose any measurements when I've stitched up my, my dart later on. So now this is what my back is looking like. I like to always cross check my measurements, cross check your bust, cross check your waist and your hip that you've not gotten rid of any extra measurement that I actually need and if there's any excess you can get rid of it through your center back or through your side. I like to remove about half an inch from the side and from the center back and what this will do is to help to create a curved shape on the side seam as well as on the center back. On the sides, I like to start my curving about one inch below my upper chest line so I don't I get rid of any measurements that I would need for my bust point or my bust line. So I'm just curving that back into my hip line like so, so it's nice and smooth. And then I'm going to be going to my center back and I'm going to draw in a similar curve that we have on our side. So curve it inwards towards the top like so and connect it back to the top of the pattern and then connect 
the bottom back to the hip so we have something that looks like a center back dart and what this will really help you do is if you decide to have a seam on your center back and you fix a zip or buttons it just sits really nicely on the body if you're going to be making like a t-shirt or a kimono something that doesn't have a seam you can ignore this center back that that we've drawn in place and just have like a straight line on the center back of your garment but i just wanted to point this out because this is something that i didn't do in my previous tutorial that i found has really really helped my garment game since i started doing for the front bodice plan, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be marking one fifth of my neck measurement minus 0 0.4 inches and I end up with about 2.7 inches. I'm just marking this along our top horizontal line or shoulder line and then down the center front, I am going to be marking one fifth of my around neck measurement plus one inch and I end up with about four inches for that and diagonally I'm marking one fifth of my neck measurement so we have three points that we can connect together to make our front neckline so this is just a simple round neck you can decide to make yours different or change up the shape next up from that diagonal point i'm going to be squaring across seven inches sideways and like we did for the back this is going to help us create our front shoulder line so once we have that seven inches point locked down i'm going to be connecting it back to the edge of our front neckline next i'm going to be planning in the front shoulder dart and the first thing i will need to do for that is to mark the midpoint on the front shoulder like so and from that midpoint place i'm going to be marking upwards 1.5 inches this is how much we'll be losing through that front shoulder dart so once i've marked that in place i'm just going in here to mark vertically my shoulder to bust line measurement so whatever yours is you make sure to use that at this particular point once i've marked that point i'm just going in to draw in my bust line horizontally like so and once that is in place i'm going to mark the middle point between my bust line and the edge of my center front neck this particular point would help me draw my front arm curve so once i've marked that in place i'm going to be getting my set square and i'm going to be drawing a horizontal line that goes across like this towards the side along that line i'm going to be marking half of my across front measurement i ended up ignoring this measurement later on because i wanted to change the shape of my front arm curve but it sort of guides you in a way to draw your front arm curve so from that half of across front measurement i'm just drawing or squaring it downwards towards the underarm line and then i'm going to mark half of my nipple to nipple measurement along my bust line so mine was 7.5 inches divided by 2 is about 4 and I'm just marking that along my bust line like so and we're going to be finding the middle point of our shoulder dart so we can connect it back to our nipple point. So now that I've marked that in place we're going to be drawing a slanted line that goes from the middle of that shoulder dart to the nipple point and then you want to connect the side of each of the darts back to your nipple point so we know our shoulder dart has been created so once i've drawn this side i'm going to trace the shoulder elevation for the other side because it's a slanted line the shape on the other side is going to be slightly different so i'm folding backwards like so folding along the middle of the dart and i'm using my tracing wheel to just trace along the shoulder line for the reverse side so along the shoulder line and along the dart line so by the time i open this up the punctured places that have been made by the tracing wheel is what i'm going to be making as our elevation point for this side of the dart so i'm just connecting that back onto the edge of the front shoulder like so so this is sort of how you cut this area of your front shoulder so I'm just going back to connect the other side of the dart back to the nipple point before we go in to draw our front arm curve. So I'm going to be getting my pattern master because that helps me with my curved lines and I'm connecting the shoulder back to the underarm line. I ignored my across front measurement because it didn't just create a shape that I liked. So if yours is not working, you can go ahead and remeasure yourself just to ensure that the front comes out a lot curvier compared to the front. If it's not 
curvier than the back then something is not quite right with your measurements or the pattern is not just getting along very well so now that i have both arm curves my shoulder that's in place i can go ahead to square down my nipple point to my waistline and my hip line so i can create my waist that for the front here i'm just going ahead to mark half an inch on both sides of that mid waist or mid nipple point on the paper like so and i like to stop my dots about half an inch from my hip line so i don't lose any measurement and i'm just going to go ahead and draw in my vertical line first and then draw in my triangular point or dart point on the left and on the right hand side so i have my front dart in place i find that to be very useful when you're working with woven fabrics or fabrics that don't have any stretch that is how you get rid of a lot of the excess around the waist around the hips around the bust so if your fabric is woven you most likely needed that at some point so i'm just going in here to finish off this part of this front waist dot like so and once that is done i always go back to double check my measurements and if you have any excess which is usually about half an inch because of the ease we added to the whole pattern plan at the beginning you can get rid of that through the side seam so curving in towards the waist like so and then curving Curving out towards the hip so you have a curved side seam for your front plan so with that done the plan for the front is complete and I like doing front and back on the same pattern because you get to really see what the shapes look like and if they work together also remember to cross check the shoulder length because the back has to match the front after you've sewn in your front that if it doesn't match you need to either take in or add on one of the shoulders so they both work along the shoulder as well so these are my front plans i'm just going to go ahead and trace off my front trace off my back add my seam allowance so i have separate pattern panels that i can use to make a sample or a prototype later on the great thing about this front plan is you have the opportunity to have a princess seam if you create a panel one and two and then you join it up the side but for this particular traced out panel here i just traced out just the main front with both dots included in place but like i said earlier on we have our princess seam there so if you wanted to create any fun corset type designs you have the freedom to do so as well i also went ahead to trace out my back added my seam allowance all the way around which is about one centimeter and i just pinned it on my mannequin just to see how they fit together and if the points such as the shoulder shoulders and the side if they match and it looks really good so far i always suggest you make a sample in some cheap material just to test the fit on yourself or on your client before making in your main garment so you just save yourself wastage but that is it for this tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed watching it if you did give it a thumbs up let me know your thoughts ideas and suggestions down below and until my next video have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye